It is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Gustavo Lukavich. Professor Gustavo V.B. Lukavich is a distinguished physicist known for his exceptional academic journey and contributions to condensed matter physics. He embarked on his academic voyage at the University of Estacol de Maringa in Brazil, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in 2009, a Master's degree in 2011, and a PhD in physics in 2014. In July 2014, Dr. Lukavich assumed the role of Assistant Professor of Physics at the Federal University of Technology, Parana, Media, Media Campus, Brazil. Throughout his career, he has been actively involved in the realm of condensed matter physics with a specific focus on both theoretical and experimental aspects. His research revolves on the development of innovative photothermal techniques, which play a pivotal role in exploring the thermal, optical, and mechanical properties of non crystalline solids and liquids. He was the recipient of Young Scientist IPPA 2020-22 Award. On behalf of all the years members, I welcome you, Professor, to this webinar. Now, I kindly request Professor Gustavo Lukasevich to begin the presentation. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. First, I want to thank you the invitation and the opportunity to talk about the work I have been developing in recent years. I am Gustavo Lukasiewicz. I work at the Federal University of Technology, UTFPR, in Paraná State in Brazil. I graduated from the State University of Maringá, where part of this work has been developed in Mauro Baesu, Nelson Astrat, and Luis Carlos Malacarne Research Group. I did a part of my PhD at Utah State University in the USA in Steven Bialkowski Laboratory, and currently I'm a visiting researcher at the Vienna University of Technology, TUVIN, in Bernhard Landel's research group. I'm going to talk about the photothermal lens and the photothermal mirror technique. And the main idea of this talk is to show the applications of these two methods under continuous or post Gaussian laser excitations and the advances in their theoretical description over the past few years. But first, I would like to introduce the university where I work in Brazil. Brazil is the largest country in South America and the world's fifth largest country by area. The federation is composed of the union of 26 states. Paraná is one of the three states of the South. The Federal University of Technology in Brazil is a public university with campus in 13 seats in Paraná State. I work on the Medianeira campus, indicated in red, close to the Iguaçu Falls. Our campus is about 60 kilometers on the border with Paraguay and Argentina. The university has approximately 34,000 students and the Medianeira campus has around 2,000 students. Today, I will talk about the theoretical description of the of sample fluid heat coupling effect in photothermal lens and the photothermal mirror techniques, the generation and detection of thermoelastic waves in metals using photothermal mirror technique with posted excitation, the induction and detection of pressure waves by pulsed photothermal lens technique, the effects of radiation forces in liquids and solids, and recent photothermal lens results using mid-infrared excitation for the study of liquid samples. The basis of the photothermal effect is the change in the thermal state of the sample induced by electromagnetic radiation, usually from a laser. The sample absorbs some of this radiation, resulting in temperature change in the sample and in the surrounding media. The induced temperature change creates surface deformation, refractive index change in the sample and in the surrounding media, also can induce elastic or acoustic waves, which propagate inside the sample, induce increased infrared emission and other effects depending on the sample. The photothermal techniques like photothermal lens, photothermal mirror, 
Mirage method, photoacoustic, have this as the foundation to determine thermal, optical, and the mechanics properties of materials. Uh, these techniques have been widely used as they are fast, non-contacting, and highly sensitive spe spectroscopy tools for material characterization. To start, let's show the principle of the photothermal lens technique. In the modern mismatched photothermal lens configuration, a weak Gaussian laser travels through the sample, and the center of the laser is probed by a photodetector. The pump laser excites the sample and induces temperature increase and deformation, and due, due, due to the refractive index gradient and the thermal expansion induced, the sample behaves like an optical lens to the probe beam. Depending, uh, and depending of the sample properties, the probe beam may converge, increasing the intensity at the detector, as you can see here, or diverge, decreasing the intensity at the detector. If we consider the effect in the surrounding media, the total effect is a sum of the photothermal lens effect in the sample, plus the photothermal lens effect in the surrounding media. In the photothermal mirror technique, we probe the effect using the probe beam laser reflected on the first surface of the sample. When the pump laser excites the sample and induces temperature increase and deformation, if the thermal expansion coefficient is positive with the heating, the solid sample expands and the probe beam diverges and the intensity at the photodetector decrease. In this figure, we can see a schematic diagram of the photothermal mirror experimental setup. We usually use a L-neon laser to probe the effect. The probe and the excitation uh, uh, beams are concentric at the sample position. When the pump laser excites the sample and induces the effect, we measure the intensity change of the center of the probe beam with a photodetector. The photodetector is connected to the oscilloscope or a data acquisition system that saves the signal as a function of time. For the theoretical model, uh, for solid samples, we need to compute the temperature change using the heat diffusion equation and the thermoelastic displacement using the thermoelastic equation. For liquid samples, it depends. If we are measuring the traditional photothermal lens with continuous excitation, maybe just the temperature change is enough. If we are measuring the photothermal lens with pulsed excitation and looking at the effect in the nanosecond time scale, we need to solve the heat diffusion equation and the pressure acoustic equation. And then we will obtain the temperature and the pressure gradient uh, to explain the signal. If we are measuring the photomechanical mirror that is excite the sample from above and study the deformation of the liquid air interface, it will be necessary to solve uh, to find the flow velocity using the Navier-Stokes equation, and then compute the displacement at the interface. The second step is obtaining the probe beam phase shift, and here SRT is the optical path length, and finally, the intensity signal at the photodetector is computed using the Fresnel diffraction theory, and this is the well-known equation used uh, in the modern mismatch, the photothermal lens technique. As the photothermal phenomena involves optics, thermodynamics, mechanics, and acoustic, it's often not possible to have an analytical solution to describe our experiment with realistic boundary conditions. So, in some cases, we use the finite element method to judge the analytical solution that occurs, and sometimes, we model all the effect using the software consumptive physics, even to describe the photothermal signal. The steps to build the model using the finite element method are define sample geometry, 
specify materials, boundary conditions, heat sources, and sinks, solve the problem with finite element definitions, and finally, obtain temperature change, displacement field, pressure, velocity field, probably beam phase shift, and signal intensity. As an example, we can see one animation made in console multiphysics for the temperature in the sample and the surrounding media. The horizontal axis is the laser propagation axis and the Z coordinate. The laser comes from the left. The vertical axis is the radial variable. And if we rotate the plane around the Z axis, we form a 3D image like that. As a first application, I would like to show the study of the heat coupling effect between a solid sample and the surrounding fluid in the photothermal lens and the photothermal mirror techniques. To analyze the sample fluid heat coupling, we consider two semi-finite space with a boundary at z equals zero. It's assumed the surrounding fluid is non-absorbing fluid, so the heat source in the fluid is equal zero, and the fluid is heated only by heat conduction. The heat source in the solid sample is due to the optical absorption, considering the Beer-Lambert law, and a continuous excitation beam with a Gaussian radial profile. Uh, we solve these equations, this, the, the heat conduction differential equations, using Laplace and the Hamp integral transform method for the limit of low and high absorption sample. For the low absorption, the absorption is considered to be uniform along the z direction, and for high absorption, the absorption happens on the surface. And these are the solutions found. These solutions are also of interest to study the heat coupling in other photothermal methods, for example, time-resolved photothermal deflection. We compare our analytical solution with a finite element method. So this figure shows the temperature profile along the Z direction for the radial coordinate equals zero for a low absorption glass immersed in air or in water. And this one shows the temperature for an opaque sample, stainless steel, immersed in air or in water. We see good agreement between the analytical solution represented by circles and the finite element method represented by lines. And we publish our results in these two papers in applied spectroscopy, not just the theoretical description for the temperature, but also the deformation induced in the solid sample and the intensity signal for the photothermal lens and the photothermal mirror method, as I will show in next slides. To determine the deformation induced by the laser in the solid sample, it's necessary to solve the thermoelastic equation with the boundary conditions for a free surface, assuming the component of the normal stress at the surface is zero. Uh, we have solved the thermoelastic equation in the quasi-static approximation, and this assumption this assumption consists of neglecting the inertia term. Basically, if we don't consider the inertia term, we are not considering the elastic waves induced in, inside the solid sample. The surface displacement can be obtained using these equations, knowing the temperature on the sample in the Henkel Fourier time space. In this work, we use the photothermal lens technique to experimentally investigate the sample fluid heat coupling effect in a low absorption glass, a low absorption sample, an optical glass, immersed in air or in water. This figure shows the experimental photothermal lens signal and the fits with the theoretical model. We used a green laser to excite the sample. So in this case, we can neglect the water absorption. For the for the glass in water, the signal is induced predominantly by the glass with the SDT positive, uh, the probe being converged, and we measure an increase in the intensity 
in this signal, uh, this black curve. From the fit, we can get properties of the glass, for example, the thermodiffusivity. For the glass in water, we observe an increase in the signal at the beginning of the transient, and then heat transfer happens from the glass to the water. Water has a DNDT negative, and then we see this a decrease in the signal. And from the fit, we can get properties for the solid sample and also for the surrounding liquids. We also did the experimental investigation for an opaque sample surrounded by air or by water. We can see that the air effect is small for the transient, while the water effect is visibly predominant. This figure shows the experimental results for the stainless steel in air and in water. And fitting the data, we obtain the thermodiffusivity of the stainless steel and the thermodiffusivity of water, the parameter theta that's related to the amplitude of the photothermal mirror signal, and the DNDT of water. So the analytical model presented in this paper here allows the termination of the physical parameters for both the solid sample and the surrounding liquid. Uh, we can see in the figure that we have the same signal amplitude using a power 10 times smaller for the sample surrounded by water. So we can use the a fluid, in this case water, with a high DNDT to amplify the signal. This slide shows our first results of photothermal mirror technique under pulsed excitation. I performed these measurements at Steven Bielkowski Laboratory at Utah State University while I was there as a visiting research, a visiting scholar doing my PhD. We measure three well-known low absorption glass samples to test the theoretical model of the photothermal mirror technique under pulsed excitation. And note that when the pump laser excites the sample, the sample expands and the signal decreases. And we measure the thermal relaxation, which is related to the thermal diffusivity. At this time, in 2013, we did not observe any elastic waves produce, uh, produced by the post laser because we did not have a resolution uh, to measure on the nanosecond scale time scale. One year later, back in Maringa City in Brazil, we measured the photothermal mirror under pulsed excitation in metals, obtaining the thermal diffusivity and the thermal expansion coefficient for bronze, brass, aluminum, and copper. But still, we did not have the resolution to observe the last waves on nanosecond scale. Just in 2016, we were able to generate and detect the thermal elastic waves in metals using the photothermal mirror method. We can see the simulated time evolution of the surface displacement induced by a pulsed laser with 15 nanosecond pulse width in, co in copper. In this case, we need to take account the inertia term to describe the effect and the photothermal mirror transient. In this image, we can see the surface deformation at different times after the post laser. And here, it's possible to observe the velocity field at different times and how elastic waves propagate through the material. This figure shows the photothermal mirror signal on the nanosecond time scale for copper and aluminum. Uh, circle are experimental data and line are, lines are the finite element analysis. Uh, the numerical predictions are in good agreement with the, with the measurements. So basically, uh, with the photothermal mirror transient with a pulse laser, we can fit the experimental transient in millisecond time scale and then have information about thermal diffusivity and thermal expansion coefficient. And then go to the nanosecond scale, fix the parameter for thermal diffusivity and thermal expansion, 
and have access to information about the propagation of the elastic waves that's related to the mechanical properties of the solid, such as Young's modulus, Poisson's radius, and density. Our next step was to investigate the induction and detection of pressure waves in liquids using photothermal lens technique. So in this case, we are measuring the transmitted probidin. For pulsed excitation, in addition to the temperature change, the pressure gradient also induces a reflective, a reflective index change in the liquid and the, consequently a relevant contribution for the photothermal lens signal. In the upper animation, we can see the temperature and in the bottom animation, we can see the pressure change generated by the pump beam and the propagating away from the center of the beam in the nanosecond scale. So temperature and the pressure change induce the probe beam phase shift and the consequently intensity variation at the detector. Here we can see the experimental photothermal lens signal for water at different time scales from second, millisecond, microsecond, and nanosecond. It's the same experimental transient. I'm just showing the photothermal lens signal at different time scale. At the nanosecond time scale, both effects, temperature and the pressure, are relevant and combined, but for millisecond, thermal diffusion becomes predominant. If we analyze the transient on millisecond scale, we can obtain the thermal diffusivity and the optical properties such as DNDT or optical absorption. If we analyze the transient on the nanosecond scale, we have access to parameters such as sound speed, the piezo optic coefficient, DNDP, and volumetric thermal expansion coefficient. And in the figure on the right, the photothermal lens signal is shown for different pulse energy for water and ethylene glycol. In this paper, we use this method to study water and ethanol mixtures. It was developed a same analytical model to describe the transient acoustic wave that allows a fitting, a fitting procedure to get the physical properties of the fluid sample in the nanosecond time scale. And from the experimental transient and the fitting procedure, the sound speed and the piezo optic coefficient, here sound speed and the piezo optic coefficient, the NDP, were measured as a function of ethanol concentration in water. So basically, we can use the photothermal lens method with posted excitation in liquids. Fit the experimental transient in millisecond time scale and have information about thermal diffusivity and DNDT or optical absorption coefficient. Then go to the nanosecond scale fix the parameter for thermal diffusivity, DNDT, and optical absorption, and have access to information about the propagation of the acoustic waves, and also determine the speed of sound and the piezo optic coefficient, DNDP. And the DNDP parameter is not so easy to find in the literature, and here we present a method to obtain this parameter. This parameter. Uh, in this paper published a month ago, we did that for 10 different liquids. And observe that the photothermal lens signal is related to a large number of parameters. By fixing some of these parameters using complementary techniques, we can access many physical properties with this method. We also did some studies on the effect of radiation pressure on liquid air interface. The first paper to relate the deformation induced by a laser beam at air-water interface was proposed by Arthur Ashkin. He published his results in the Physical Review Letters in 1973. In 2000, 
2018, he was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Physics for the optical tweezers and the application to biological system. And in this paper, they would like to answer what happens if a laser beam was irradiated on the water surface. They demonstrated that the surface elevates when pumping by the laser beam. And this does not depend on the direction of the beam. That is, the laser can irradiate on the surface from above or from below, and the surface will always go up, as in A and C. Our contribution to this topic is a significant advance in this experiment because they observe just the direction of the surface deformation. We measure the amplitude and also the dynamic of the deformation in time. We applied the photomechanical mirror technique to measure the surface deformation induced by a laser beam at air water interface. We pump the water with both continuous or pulsed laser and use a second and weak continuous laser to probe the effect. The probe beam laser reflected on the first surface of the sample, it's directed to the photodetector, and we measure just the center of the probe beam. If the liquid surface rises, it will work as a convex mirror, the probe beam diverges, and we expect a decrease in the intensity in, this, in the center of the beam. However, if the laser beam pushes down the water surface, it will work as a concave mirror, the probe beam converges, and we expect an increase in the intensity at the detector. And this is how works the experimental setup. About the theoretical model, the velocity field in the fluid is obtained solving the Navier-Stokes equation, taking into account the radiation pressure at the interface, surface tension, and gravity. The next step is to compute the surface displacement and use the surface deformation to calculate the probe beam phase shift and generate the numerical simulation for the photomechanical mirror signal. This is a complex problem to be solved analytically. We use the finite element method using the software consonant physics. This problem have symmetry around the Z direction due to the symmetry of the sample and the laser beam. If we rotate this figure to the 2P radians, we get a picture in, in 3D. So in console multiphysics, we use the mode laminar to phase flow, moving mesh. Uh, this model solves the Navier-Stokes equation for an incompressible flow. As initial condition, it was considered that the fluid has zero, zero velocity. And the boundary conditions are the z-axis is the axis of symmetry, and the laser beam irradiates the water on the upper surface. So the radiation pressure is applied at this surface. It's also considered here the surface tension. And moreover, in all the fluid is applied the gravitational force. This animation shows the dynamic of the water surface when we pump the water using a continuous laser. Under continuous excitation, the liquid surface rises with time, reaching a maximum deformation in the order of nanometers at the center of the excitation beam. The propagation of the symmetric waves also contributes to the intensity signal observed at the detector. And note that as part of the water rises, due to conservation of mass, a hole appears around the central deformation. And this figure shows the deformation at different times. We measure this effect with the photomechanical mirror technique. The deformation works like a convex mirror, diverging the probe beam and decreasing the intensity at the photo detect with time, as we can observe in the graph. The open circle represents the experimental data and the continuous line represents the numerical calculation. 
This animation shows the deformation of the water surface when we use the pulsed laser with a pulse width of a few nanoseconds. When the pulse laser irradiates the water, it induces an increase of local pressure, and the water, after a few microseconds, begins to emerge deformation, as we can see in the animation. These waves led to the photomechanical mirror signal observed in this figure. And we can see that the experimental results agree very well with the numerical simulation. We got a quantitative measurement of the effect of radiation force at air-water interface, and we publish our results in Nature Communications. We get experimental results in complete accordance with the theory, a better understanding of radiation force at air-liquid interface, we use the photomechanical mirror technique for nano-scale displacement detection, and the theory described here can be used to improve optical manipulation. This method can also be used in the characterization of liquids. This slide shows the experimental measurement for the photomechanical mirror using a continuous and posted laser for ethylene glycol, mineral oil, nojol, and ethanol samples. And from the experimental transients, we have access to the appropriate density, viscosity, and surface tension. The viscosity is relevant for the shape of the transient, while the, um, uh, while the surface tension affects the amplitude signal. In this figure, we can see the dampness of the shape and the amplitude of the photomechanical mirror transient for different physical properties. Note that for different density values, the time that the maximum signal happens shifts. If the viscosity values change, the signal shapes, the signal shape is entirely different. And the change in the surface tension significantly alters the amplitude signal. As an application of the technique, we add different concentration of bridge 35 into the water, and this substance is a detergent that significantly changes the surface tension of water. However, the viscosity and the density remains the same. Uh, with the experimental measurements, it was possible to obtain the surface tension as a function of bridge concentration in water. We can observe that with increasing concentration of bridge, the amplitude, we can observe uh, the, the amplitude of the signal increase due to the de decrease of surface tension. And these results were published in this paper in Scientific Report Journal. Uh, at this point, I want to draw your attention to the flexibility of these methods in obtaining different physical properties. Before, I showed that using the photothermal lens technique with pulsed laser excitation is possible to obtain the thermal diffusivity, optical absorption coefficient, sound speed, and the piezo optic coefficient of liquids. And now, with the excitation from above and the measuring the reflected probe beam at the interface liquid air, the surface tension and the viscosity of the liquid can be obtained. I also would like to, to present the experimental and numerical study of elastic waves driven by the momentum of light. The experimental setup consists of a cylindrical mirror illuminated by a laser pulse beam at normal incidence. This upper surface is a high, a high reflective mirror, and immediately after illumination, elastic waves are created. And in order to detect the presence of the elastic waves, piezoelectric detectors were deployed on the same side and opposite side of illumination. And here we can see a plot of the normal displacement versus time, at the sensor location highlighted in green. The features 
of the displacement waveform can be correlated to the arrival of different waves types at the sensor location. This animation includes the incidence of uh, the incident illumination, the generation and propagation of elastic waves in the mirror, and the correlation of the elastic waves components to the measurements to the measured displacement waveform. Here we can see the experimental setup with the sensor deployed on the high reflective surface and on the opposite side. We can see the experimental and simulate surface displacement for different distance of the piezoelectric sensor from the laser beam incidence position. And they are in excellent agreement. Uh, this work was carried out in collaboration with researchers from the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia and the University of British Columbia in Canada. In this, uh, in this paper was presented measurements of temporal surface displacement induced by laser pulses reflected from a solid, a solid geoelectric mirror, modeling the transfer of momentum from the electromagnetic field to the geoelectric mirror, with subsequently creation, propagation of multi-component elastic waves, and the consistency between prediction and measurements of surface displacement offers complete evidence of elastic transients driving predominantly by the momentum of light. These advances in the theoretical models and the experimental apparatus of photothermal lens, photothermal mirror, and the photomechanical mirror techniques have contributed to the, a better understanding of photothermal and the photomechanical effects in solids and liquids. And last year, I was very honored and grateful to receive the junior prize awarded by the International Photoacoustic and Photothermal Association, IPPA, due to the contribution mentioned during this talk. At the same event, Professor Mauro Luciano Baez received the senior award, and the Professor Nelson Astrat received the junior award in 2015 in Serbia. Uh, remembering that most of these photothermal lens and photothermal mirror uh, measurements show, showing this talk were carried out in Mauro Baesu and Nelson Astrat laboratories in, at the State University of Maringá in Brazil. It was a great honor to receive, to, to have been awarded, especially when I look at the names of great scientists who have received this prize over the years, working in great laboratories uh, and universities. We are now applying uh, the photothermal lens technique to study of liquids using external cavity quantum cascade laser with a continuous excitation. Uh, this work is being developed in Professor Bernhard Lendl's laboratory at the Vienna University of Technology in Austria. Uh, we can observe the photothermal lens experimental transient in different liquids, but for the same wave number, power, and the path length. And the amplitude and shape of the signals are related to the optical and the thermal properties of the sample. To the samples. Uh, here it's another example of the photothermal lens transient in toluene in different wave numbers of excitation. And observe that if we change the excitation wave number, the amplitude of the effect changes. We can define the amplitude of the photothermal lens signal as the intensity at the end minus the intensity at the beginning divided by the test at the beginning. So we can plot the photothermal lens amplitude signal as a function of the wave number. For this kind of laser, the laser's power emission is not the same at each wave number, as we can observe here. So if we divide the photothermal lens amplitude by the power emission, we obtain a spectrum related to the sample's absorption. Here we can see the photothermal lens spectrum and FTIR spectrum for toluene, chloroform, and cyclohexane. And we can observe a good agreement between both. 
and this work is being prepared for publication. We are developing uh, the theoretical model to describe the photothermal lens effect in the mid-infrared, simulating the temperature in the liquid and in the surrounding optical windows to understand the heat coupling effect. Uh, for this simulation, we consider ethanol with uh, an optical absorption of 50 inverse centimeter surrounded by two calcium fluoride optical windows with a two millimeter thickness. We used for the simulation uh, an excitation beam with a radius of 350 micrometer and with 20 milliwatts power. And we can observe how the temperature changes for different cell uh, path lengths. 15 micrometer, 25 micrometer, and 50 micrometer. We observe that with the increase of the path length, the maximum temperature in the liquid increase, and also the temperature difference between the liquid and the optical window is bigger for large path length. That means proportionally, less energy is transferred to the optical window for a large path length. This can also be observed in the photothermal lens signal. Uh, here, blue line is the contribution of the signal due to the thermal lens in the optical windows, created by heat diffusion from the liquid to the window. Black line is the contribution for the signal due to the ethanol, and the red line is the total effect, sum of both. The contribution from the optical window decreases when we increase the liquid thickness, as expected, and also the total signal amplitude increases with the increase of the liquid thickness. For example, for 15 micrometer, we have less than 1% of signal. For 25 micrometer, we have around 2.5%. And for 50 micrometer, the signal is close to 13%. And this work is uh, in development. There are many effects to be studied uh, with many interesting applications. I want to thank you, the event organizers, uh, and also our entire research group that made these works possible to be carried out. In particular, my supervisors doing the PDD, Professor Luis Carlos Malacarne and Professor Nelson Astrat. Professor Mauro Baesso, my supervisor doing the postdoc at the State University of Maringá. Professor Steven Bielkowski, my supervisor at Utah State University, during the time I was uh, visiting research over there. To my doctoral colleagues, Otávio Capelotto and Vitor Zanuto. Tomas Pojer from the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia. And my current research group at the Federal University of Technology in Brazil, UTFPR, Leandro Culano, Elisandra Sen, Marcos Paulo Belançon, and Marcelo Sandrini. Thanks to our research group in Vienna, where we are applying the photothermal lens technique with mid-infrared excitation for the study of liquids. In particular, uh, thank the leader of the research group, Professor Bernhard Lendl. Also, thanks to the Brazilian funding agents, CNPq, CAPS, Fundação Araucária, the European Union's Horizon 2020 and Passepartout. Uh, I'm always looking for new collaborations. My main contribution to several of these works present today was modeling the photothermal effects using the finite element method. Uh, if you have any effect that would be interesting to describe using this kind of simulation, I would be happy to help you. Uh, this is my contact email. Thank you very much for your attention.